Welcome back to the channel, y'all. I'm Scotty G, back at it again. Today, let's talk about sex and libido, shall we? My wife and I have been married for 20 years. In that time frame, you are going to have ups and downs. And one of our lowest points had to do with building a medical facility and and taking on taking on a lot of debt and just generally going through a tough time. And I struggled with mild depression. And at one point I was actually having suicidal ideation. Didn't last very, very long. Snapped out of it. And in September of 2000, 2020, I had what I call my awakening. And I snapped out of it. Uh, I didn't like feeling bad anymore. I didn't like who I really was at the time. I didn't like the reflection in the mirror. My energy was really low and I was bound and determined to make some changes. Well, lo and behold, within about a month or so, those changes basically made me more fun to be around and my wife got her husband back. And that leads me to the common denominator that I see when it comes to people that are struggling in their bedroom, struggling in their marriage in general, and it's stress, anxiety. That is it. Anxiety is a huge libido killer, ladies and gentlemen, specifically in women. Guys, we have what's called testosterone, so it counterbalances that particular problem. But if you have an anxious household, if you're an anxious dude, you're not setting a very good tone in a relationship and you're stressed out all the time, your wife is not going to be, she's not going to be turned on. Anxiety is the biggest trait when it comes to killing your bedroom. Overly stressed people, anxious people, neurotic people, they have a tendency to struggle long-term in either marriages, long-term relationships, just dating in general. It's a huge turnoff for ladies, and it is the greatest libido killer out there. Being stressed out, being an anxious guy. So, what do you do about it? How do you fix it? For one, put things in perspective, okay? How bad do you really have it in your life, right? You could always be worse. If you don't feel good about yourself, there are some things that you can do to boost your self-confidence, basically boost your testosterone back to your younger levels. Eat right, move more, get to the gym, go for some walks, get in the sun. It is That's a big deal. A lot of people underestimate the value of sunlight 20 minutes a day could really make a big difference in your vitamin D levels in your bloodstream and can really play with your mood. All easy things to do, but people just don't want to do them because they think that it's time consuming. Well, if you want to feel better about yourself, if you want to feel better in general and just have a healthier lifestyle, eat less, move more. That really, that's really what it comes down to. There's no fads involving that particular diet plan, right? Eat less, move more. Be more fun to be around. Find something that you truly enjoy. Are there hobbies that you wanted that you, that you do now that you just gave up in in your family life when you started having kids, or the things that uh, that you really enjoyed that you gave up? Well, get back into that. On top of that, if you're a father, bring your kids with you. Simple as that. Share what you love with your kids. And in, the, and in the process, you do something that you enjoy and it can make a difference in your mood. And if you're happier to be around, chances are your wife, your girlfriend, your woman will be more turned on. <laughs> okay? Because if you're just an Eeyore and not very fun to be around, that's not a huge turn on for a lady. Just saying. They don't have testosterone like we do. Remember this, fellas. Joy is contagious. Happiness is contagious. Sadness is contagious. So whatever you put into your environment, you're going to have it bounce back from back back at you from other people. If you're joyful, if you're happy, people will have a tendency to be happy around you. 
If there's people that are really just upset, even though you're happy, they're probably just miserable. Don't let them. Don't let them make you miserable. It's all good. That's on them, not you. Okay. Another big one. When I talk to anxious guys, neurotic guys, stay calm, stay calm, cool, calm, and collected. That's a masculine trait. If you want to reset your polarity, masculine and feminine, yin and yang, stay calm. Cool, calm, and collected is sexy. That's a sexy thing for a guy, especially if you find yourself in a love lull, as I call it. If, um, if you're in a dead bed, which by definition is sex uh, 10 or less times in a year, uh, which essentially comes down to once a month. If you find yourself in a dead bed, don't freak out. Concentrate on yourself. Try to make yourself feel better by the things that I've already talked about. And who knows? Things might turn around. They may not. But don't freak out. Cool, calm, and collected. Another thing that anxious dudes is they use sex as the end-all, be-all remedy when they don't feel good about themselves. That is a very, very common trait that I see in a lot of guys that I've talked to. That is not sexy, okay? If you're using sex to pacify your self-confidence problems, not sexy. That's not sexy, fellas. Be fun. No one likes an Eeyore, is what I call them. Be fun to be around. Okay, smile. Even if you're not feeling the greatest, try to make an effort to smile. That A lot of times that does make a big difference for a lot of people. Sounds simple enough, but it works. If you're fun to be around and you and you can make your woman laugh, that is, that's an aphrodisiac, okay? If you're stressed, if you're anxious, if you're neurotic, and you're constantly at level 11, that that is not going to do wonders for her libido. Just say it, okay? Now, I'm talking mostly to guys in this episode, but it can happen for ladies too. Women can be very, very anxious, just generally speaking, and it could really kill their libido because they don't have testosterone. That's the big one. That's the big difference between men and women. We are different. <laughs> After all, we are different. I'll just leave it at that. Stress and anxiety. That is the number one libido killer from what I've talked to, especially in married couples that have been married a long time. If you're going through a rough time, stress is going to, it's really going to do a number on, on her libido specifically. Okay. So be fun. Take it easy. Cool, calm, and collected. All right. So if you like this material, please hit that subscribe button. For those who have already subscribed to me, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So until next time, be better than you were yesterday and be desirable.